there was Louis XI of France, who lived in the 15th century, Ferdinand of Spain, who straddled the 15th and 16th centuries, and Henry VIII of England, who was born the year before Columbus sailed and who died in 1547. These were the fathers of the modern state. It would take centuries to be perfected, but from the very beginning, the modern state pursued four major tasks. First, to secure obedience, to neutralize all possible challenges, to gain the monopoly of force, to maintain law and order, to make the violence it exerted the only legitimate violence. And what this meant, you can see in the gibbets that figure prominently in a lot of things. The second thing the state had to achieve was to exert control over economic life, to facilitate the circulation and exchange of goods, to grasp as much as possible of national income. Third, it had to refocus patriotic identity from the local to the national state. Here we see not only Henry III of France, but also the lily, or fleur de lis, which had become the symbol of French royalty. And finally, the state had to dominate or control the religious life of society, or at least ally itself with the representative of religion. Now, we've already seen that the rise of the modern state was dependent on both the growth of a modern economy of capital and account books like this one and on the arms that new technology made possible and the new economy made affordable. But it also owed a great deal to the revival of Roman law, which had survived in Italy, and which after the 13th century spread through Europe, carried by lawyers trying to strengthen the king against the clergy and against the feudal battle. Roman law carried the idea of an absolute ruler, the princess, whose will was law. This combined with another classical ideal, that of the hearer, who is practically a god, strong, benevolent, and wise. This heroic royal figure was going to incarnate what we today describe as nationalism, a sentiment of patriotic pride in origins and in past glories which would be used to justify present dominion and future greatness. By the 16th century, Italians, Spaniards and Frenchmen learned to sing the glory of their particular country, to glorify a national character or a national tongue. In theory, the prince answer the need for a strong central authority to impose unity and order. In practice, the material interests of most princes were served by more law and order, more law and order improved revenues, regular revenues paid for the regular armies that could impose more law and order and squeeze more revenues, thus further increasing the central power. 